As a result of the elections of July 1932, the Nazis became the biggest party in Germany, with 37% of the vote. Now only one man stood between Hitler and the chancellorship, President Hindenburg, the man Hitler had challenged for the presidency and lost. Hindenburg met Hitler on August the 13th, 1932. Hitler demanded to be chancellor. Hindenburg refused, and his state secretary recorded the reasons why. He could not bring himself to give government power to a single party which did not represent the majority of the electorate and which furthermore was intolerant, lacking in discipline and frequently even appeared violent. But then different pressure groups began to lobby President Hindenburg. A group of businessmen, including the former president of the Reichsbank, Jalmar Schacht, wrote to Hindenburg arguing that Hitler must get the chancellorship for the good of Germany. Sie müssen mal Deutschlands allgemeine Situation 1930 bis 33 betrachten. Und wenn jetzt ein Mann arbeitslos wurde in der Zeit, dann blieb nur eins übrig. Er wurde entweder Kommunist oder er wurde SA-Mann. Und da war dann doch die Wirtschaft der Meinung, es ist besser, die Leute werden es armen. Da herrscht Disziplin und Ordnung. Und im Anfang, das muss man heute ehrlich sagen, es war im Anfang nicht zu sehen, ist Nationalsozialismus etwas Gutes, was auch schlechte Seiten hat, oder ist es etwas Böses mit einigen guten Nebeneffekten. Das war nicht zu sehen. New pressures came as the results of an army war game arrived. The author of the report told the cabinet that in the event of civil unrest, the army couldn't control both the Nazis and the communists. After careful consideration, it's been shown that the forces of law and order of the Reich and of the German states would in no way be strong enough to protect the country against national socialists and communists and protect the borders. But if there were pressures on Hindenburg as 1932 came to a close, there were also pressures on the Nazis. The crowds who waited outside the Nazis' headquarters in Munich in December weren't aware of the true nature of the problems the party faced. The party was going bankrupt because of the cost of having to fight so many different elections. One of the key figures in the party, Gregor Strasser, had just resigned, and the Nazi vote had dropped to 33% in the November 1932 election. It looked like their support had peaked. But powerful figures on the traditional right still felt they had to negotiate with Hitler. They too wanted to eliminate democracy and destroy the communists. And without Hitler and the Nazis, they had no access to mass support. A former chancellor, the aristocratic von Papen, came up with a deal. Hitler could be chancellor if he, von Papen, was vice-chancellor and there were only two other Nazis in the cabinet surrounded by more traditional conservatives. The theory was, Hitler would be tamed. As a result, Hindenburg offered Adolf Hitler the chancellorship on January the 30th, 1933. Von Papen crowed, we've hired him, and the new cabinet posed for the cameras. The Nazis would later try and rewrite history to say that Hitler became Chancellor simply because it was his destiny. But in reality, Hitler had been helped into power by economic circumstance and the support and miscalculation of others. It all happened so fast in those days. I, I after one had seen it come gradually. The Communist Party line, to which I still officially belonged, was that it doesn't matter if Hitler get to power. That's good. He'll soon have proved himself incompetent, and then it's our turn. For some extraordinary reason, they didn't realize that he was going to change the law once he comes to power, which he did very smartly. They have not voll erkannt, wir haben nicht voll erkannt, was es bedeuten wird. 
Wir glaubten, sie, wir glaubten, ihn noch parlamentarisch fesseln zu können. Ein, ein völliger Wahnsinn. 